Hi, this is Jared from Shudome, and today we're going to look at area calculations for siding and finished floors. The techniques in this video will help you do area calculations really for anything that's based on uh, wall elements or slabs, and from that I think you can extrapolate to a whole lot of other things like roofs or what have you. Uh, before we get started, please like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel and all those other YouTube things that you hear every YouTuber talk about. Okay, let's get going. One way to do area calculations for siding, or really for anything, is kind of the old-fashioned way of using fills. So just as a, a quick introduction before getting to the more powerful, better way to do it, I'm going to select a fill. I've got a calculations layer saved and I'm just going to go ahead and draw over my elevation. Um, do this really quick. The second thing I'm clicking on there is it's showing the area already, 120, 119 square feet. So you could see if you just wanted a really crude area calculation, you could go, okay, 1,000 square feet, 120, so that's 1,200, another 1,000. You know, so you could just do that. You could do this for every elevation. Um, you could also, let me uncheck this area calc. Uh, you could do the windows here. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, I'm not being super accurate. And that's because this is a crude calculation. We're not looking for perfection. We understand that the model, while very good, is not necessarily perfect. So we're just saying, you know what, we're getting pretty dang close and whatever this is, is going to be good enough. So I've now gone and drawn my siding and I've drawn my windows. I'm going to uh, select the fill tool, uh, command A, which is select all. And I'm going to drag this stuff just down here, 150 feet, to just get away from the rest of my model. So we've got a couple things going on here. We've got really crude fills for siding and really crude fills for windows. So I'm going to select these. I'm going to go up here to Fill Consolidation. You can also find it up in the menu under Reshape Fill Consolidation, but let's just use my work environment. Click that. Now we've merged that. Uh, looks like this one wasn't touching. Let's just move it over a bit. And uh, that's good enough. So we can see on this elevation, we've got about 2,600 square feet of siding, but we've got these windows to subtract. Uh, a trick I like to do is you just grab all the windows, you group them together like this, fill consolidation again. Now we have the square footage of windows and the square footage of siding for this elevation. So 2600 minus 122, or we could go like that, subtract it. Now that's right here. That's the approximate square footage for siding, you'd probably round that to 2,400, 2,500, whatever. That's the number you could give to whoever you want. So that's a one crude way to do it. Uh, again, you could probably line this up perfect, make it really good, but we're not, we're not going for perfection. We're just going for, you know, close enough estimates. So that's one way. It's manual. It's labor intensive. It's not super accurate. It's dumb. So let's look at a better way. Let's go to my model and let's isolate the siding. So as you've seen from previous models of mine, I'm gonna go ahead and hide all the other layers here. I model siding separately from the exterior wall. And this is one of the reasons why. Well, first of all, it's perfect, like nice and beautiful. And now I also, I know I can look at this model and go, okay, this is all the siding in the project. So now I can go create a schedule, which I've already created, but I'm gonna walk you through how to do it this schedule. What it is, it's taking the wall elements on the exterior vertical finish layer and creating schedule. And I'm listing them by element ID just for reference. And then I'm putting a lot of these surface areas here and we'll look at that in a second. So that's all the schedule is, right? Another way to look at it is you figure out how in 3D or 2D to isolate the elements you want. Whatever you did to isolate those elements, those are your criteria here. For me, it was just really just a layer and element type. I guess I don't even need that, but just a layer. Now I got all these. Now the reason why I have all of these is if we look at these numbers, uh, you could see 
they give different things. And really, when you look at going to add fields and you go to wall and you look at, okay, do I want, you know, length of walls, whatever, what are you looking for? You see here, there's a, a lot of areas, right? Surface area of wall, inside face, conditional, gross net, like what are all these? I'm not sure. So, or I shouldn't say I'm not sure. I just say, I'm not sure which of these gives me the number I want. So what I've done is I've just added them all to my schedule and I can see all these numbers. And uh, so I'm going to go back to the schedule here. I've done this sigma here to sum them and then this sigma one here to give me a total number of elements. What that's important is here's my total number of elements, 87. And then I can see here, I've got all these different numbers. So if we look here, it's a little hard to read because the names are big there, but okay, so panel siding test one and test two. So if I go to this elevation, what I did is I did my fill technique and much more carefully modeled or did a fill to give me the area of, of this piece of siding and this piece of siding. As an aside, in this model, I made each layer of siding or each story of siding a separate piece. Oftentimes I'll do it all as one continuous one for various reasons on this project, it made sense to do this. Anyways, I took this piece of siding and I traced over it with a fill, cut out the window and I got 150.76. And I did this one here at the top as well. And I got 66.5, right? So if we look at that, those fills are just over there. Uh, and I did two because I wanted one that had a cut for a window and one that had a solid element operation just to see if anything. So remember that 150 point something, 66.5. If we go here and look at test one and test two, we can see not these first column, but this second column here, 150.9 and 66.8. So those are effectively the numbers I got with my fill. Again, if we go back, you can see 66.5, 150. Um, and this one over here is even closer. So that's telling me that surface area of the wall outside net is the number that I want. So let's just go ahead and get rid of the others. And right here is, let's see, here is all my siding. I can even merge them all into one thing. That's that merge items. We'll just bring that out even farther. So this right here is 8,157 is approximately the surface area of the siding my building. The 87 elements, why that's important is if I look here, I'm gonna eye dropper that to get the wall tool, command A for select all, I can see up here, I have 87 elements selected. So the schedule in, in this 3D view are, are matching. Okay, now let's look at creating a schedule to calculate the square footage of our finished floors. First thing we want to do, we want to go ahead and isolate the elements. This is really just for checking. So I'm going to zoom into the model. I'm going to select my finished floor. I'm going to use the quick layers palette, which is so wonderful. I have down here, turn off all the other layers. And then uh, let me go back to the previous view here. Okay. So here's all the finished floors in my building. That looks correct. Um, it's missing the stairs. That's all right. That would be just calculated differently. Okay. So this is what I'm calculating. I can see now I've already gone ahead and set up the schedule to save us a little time. So let's just jump to that and I'll explain what it is. Okay. So we have here our schedule. Let's see what I put. So element type is slab layers, floor finish. Again, I really could just do floor finish, but I don't want to show both because you might have multiple element types on a layer. So you might have to be more specific with the criteria that's based on your model. I've got the element ID, I've got the composite structure, I've got the composite structure also with this little red flag, so that's going to sum all the numbers by composite structure. And then here I have area, top surface area, etc. And these fields come not from the slab tool here, which has surface area, slab, bottom, top, gross, blah, 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 but from the general criteria here, we scroll down. I've got top surface area condition gross net. Doing some testings in this video, I found that the slab areas are wrong in ARCHICAD, so you have to use the top surface area. And then I'll show you how I figured that out. So let's hit OK. So we can see, we've got the element ID, which don't really need, but it's just there for my own reference. If I were to 
put this on a schedule, I might actually get rid of that, or I might hide the composite structure, do something like that. But now I've got the three areas, or I've got the four areas. Let's merge items so we can see, no, actually, it's not merge items. So we go ahead and we can see that area, conditional area doesn't work, top surface area gross, and top surface area net. We're getting different numbers. Scroll down to the bottom here. We get a 471, a 487.6, and a 471. So two of these are the same, and one of them is different. Let's see what one we care about. So I'm going to do the same trick I did earlier with the walls. I'm going to select this, and then I'm going to go show in 3D. It's going to think for a second. Here it is. Now if I go up to element information, which again is up in your menu, but you should be using my work environment, so it's just that button there. I can see here, you know, different things we can turn on in element information. And what I care about is the area on plan hole is considered and a hole is not considered. And you can see it's 67,000 square inches and 70,000 square inches, which is not what our schedule shows because our schedule shows square feet. I can fix this by going to back to the schedule, go to dimensions, change it from 16th inch to quarter inch. That changes how areas are calculated here. You can see here uh, 16th inch is square inches, quarter inch is square feet, decimals. So. Anyway, so I'm changing that. Now when we go back to the 3D window and have the element selected, now we can see holes and plans is 470.96 and 487.56. So that tells us we want holes considered because that's cutting out all the walls and all that stuff. So 470 is the number we want. We can go back here and now we can get rid of these because that 471 is the thing we want. One of the reasons why you're seeing numbers slightly different is under option projects preferences calculation units i have the calculation units set to be finer in the schedule so if we did it at two which i'll just do for illustrative purposes you can see that's now 470.96 so it's identical but i find that doing schedules it's okay to be a little cleaner number and honestly this is all not guesses but this isn't reality right we're, we're just close so saying 471 is more realistic, right? It's uh, significant digits, if we all remember from science class in high school. So anyways, here is our schedule. And if I sum that stuff right there, we could see here, we've got about 340 square feet of tile and about 5,255 square feet of hardwood floor in this project. That's all. And again, we've got that 12, 24 number of elements just so we can compare that we have the right number of elements selected in the 3D window, or I should say the right number of elements that we could see in the 3D window along with the right number of elements we could see in the schedule. That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope that makes sense. Please ask questions in the comments. We can do follow-up videos. The schedules are really straightforward and also a little confusing, but it's all just about making sure that the information is showing up is what you're looking for, which is why you know, this video started with doing those tests with, uh, with the fills to make sure that, you know, we're looking at the right information and doing it slow manually first. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking for today. You guys have a great day. I will talk to you later. Thank you.